Hey friends, I went to a flea market yesterday and I don't usually go to flea markets because there aren't any good ones around here, but I was feeling adventurous. So I drove an hour and a half to a flea market I haven't been to in, I don't know, years. And I don't really need a lot of stuff to list right now. I have a lot, so it was really for fun. And I had two rolls. Everything had to fit in this tote bag, which admittedly is pretty big. And also my budget was $40. So I'll show you what I got. In no particular order, here's what I got. First, this miniature vase. It's um, got a real mid-century modern look. I assume it was hand thrown, not molded, but I'll look at it more closely. I think miniature vases are kind of popular though. And it was $2.95. And I thought that under that sticker it was signed, but it was apparently signed $1. So maybe not, but $2.95 miniature vase. Um, I also got this box of buttons on cards in this little um, nice wooden cigar box. This was a dollar for all of these, and they are um, mostly on cards, and they're not super new, so I think I'll sell these in a lot or in lots. I thought these were kind of nice, nice blazer buttons, little pearl buttons, um, and then these are kind of messed up. But there's also some loose stones in here, and this is this would normally be a nice button. It's really tarnished, but I'll try to clean it up with the um, brass brush a little bit and see. It's like a nice cameo button on like some acrylic or something, multiple metals. Um, and there's like these are not super. These are just you know. 20th century, not super old, like this is plastic, but they're kind of nice. People do buy these. Um, this one again, not super old and it's probably just ornamental, but I'll check it out a little more. So there's some little sets. This one's a little older. So there's some cute things. This one's a nice um, realistic button. And realistic buttons mean it's like a like it, it depicts something, an actual object of some sort. The paint is coming off it, but. Um, so, you know, not the awesomest buttons ever, but it was a dollar for the whole box. So here's some more of these actually. So there's actually three of these and this one is in good shape. So that's a good little lot. These are really heavy for buttons, um, you know. So I think that was worth a dollar, right? The ones on cards. Yeah, okay. That's that. And then <laughs> I got this Royal Dalton Good King Wenceslas. Totally not really my thing, but for the right price. And I looked these up and they do seem to sell for $40-ish. Um, it's it says Royal Dalton, Good King Wenceslas, and it, it's like 1952, and it's got all kinds of numbers on it, so it's very well documented. He's, um, you know, just a porcelain Christmas figure, and it is that time of year. It doesn't, I didn't find any damage on this, which is surprising, but good. And he was part of a lot that I got for $20, so I'll show you all the rest of what was in that lot. Okay, here's another thing, <laughs> and I have to admit this is really just for me. It's a little instrument, a little Russian instrument, and um, I have to like look up how it's supposed to be tuned because it is not in tune and it sounds terrible, but... But I think it would be fun to, to play. <laughs> I don't know. It was just a whim. It says on it, it says, Parapalushka. Parapalushka. Um, 
I don't know where the emphasis goes in that word, but that's what it says. And I will look up what that means and how you tune this sucker. See, like, I think it could be kind of cool. But anyway, that's I'll probably just keep that unless I get sick of it at some point. So those two things plus all of these postcards were 20. And admittedly, I really just wanted the postcards, but I threw in the instrument and Good King wants us less to sort of like encourage the guy to bargain um, or to give me a good deal or whatever. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be too expensive, but these are, um, they're all pretty early. These are all sort of like, you know, early, early 20th century and it's all like known places. So it seems like, I mean, I didn't even look through them that carefully, but they seem like pretty good cards. Um, and there's a lot of, they have dates written on the front, so they're, you know, 1908. Um, seems like a lot of hotels and street scenes and stuff. So I think these are pretty good. And let's see. Oh, there's a cyanotype. Um, there's hotels. This is, let's see. Firecliff Lodge, New York. Yeah, it's a lot of hotels, actually. If that's the point of the collection. Um, but a lot of stuff I haven't seen before. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw a, yeah, this is a RPPC of, um, I'm sure I can figure it out, but it's, it says some stuff and it's dated 1909. Um, oh, that one has gold highlights book is uh, obviously in a state of disrepair. Let's see. Is this an, I think this is a real photo. Yeah, some of these are real photos. That's cool. Poland Spring House. <laughs> Presumably in Maine, right? Doesn't say. But Poland Spring is in Maine. Um, really nice. They smell kind of funny. A little bit. <laughs> Not too bad. Um, Great Barrington Mass. That's an RPPC. That's nice. That's Florida. So I think these postcards were a good deal for 20 bucks plus an instrument and Good King wins this list. Livermore Falls, Maine. The most depressing town in the world. We drive through there sometimes. But somebody had a nice vacation there. And... another RPPC. What is that? Oh, here's a kitty. Greetings from Mount Washington. Oh, Mount Washington never sells, but that's a really old one. Oh, 1895. That doesn't even... I'll have to look at that more closely because it's a little early for a postcard, but we'll check that out. Um... So a lot of these are New England, which isn't the best, but they're really interesting and unique ones. So that's cool. You look at the the cars in that one. That's nice. So I'm pretty happy with these postcards. Um, excuse me, Otterly. So this whole wants a book. <laughs> so there was that, and my weird Russian instrument and Good King wants this list of money. So I think we're up to $22.95 right now. Oh, and then that guy who I bought that stuff from really wanted to give me something extra. He tried to give me perfume, which, like, I can't. I hate perfume. So he said, you like Christmas, right? So he gave me these, which I didn't look at. But now I'm looking at them, and they're kind of awesome because they are pugs on sleighs. <laughs> and people love pugs. And these are Danbury Mint. Santa's Helper, the first annual Santa's Helper Pug Ornament. Wow, that's better than I thought it was. So I have two of these. Oh, this pug is not in his sleigh properly, but we will glue him back in. 2005, it says. 
Nice. So those were my freebies. Pug, sleigh pug ornaments. Denbury Mint. <laughs> Glue that guy in. Um, so still at $22.95. And then, what's this? And then we got this stuff. Um, I didn't know what to so I got this book, which I have not looked up at all, but I thought the cover was really gorgeous. And I think this might actually be a pretty good book. Maybe, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll sell it for the cover, if not for the content. Um, it's X Library. It was apparently originally <laughs> priced at 35 somewhere. And it's um, 1910. And people do like old gardening books, and this has really nice um, illustrations, botanical illustrations. So I think this is a pretty winning, winning book. Pretty nice. Ooh, it's like Edwardian gardening machinery. So that's cool. Um, and again, I just really like this Art Nouveau cover. I thought it was really pretty. I know the lighting's kind of weird. I'm sorry. It's really bright. And there's a cat blocking the window as well. And then also from that booth, I got this, which is D.W. Griffith's Supreme Truth Hearts of the World Souvenir. And D.W. Griffith obviously was an early filmmaker. And this is from 1918. Um, I think this is probably one of his movies that I haven't seen. This latest love story ever told, A Romance of the Great War. Um, but I'll have to look up more of what this is and tell you more about what it may or may not be worth. Yeah, these look like movie stills and there's notes about it and stuff. And it's apparently a World War I film. So this could be kind of interesting. It's this whole booklet. And then it's uh, it's made in New York. It's, you know, a little bit rough shape, but it, it maintains its integrity. So there's that. And then I got this little folder that I haven't looked in yet of Providence Opera House Summer Season. And this looked you know, turn of the century to me, and like it might be something cool, so I just put it in my pile. And so, what is this? Oh, okay, these different ones. I don't know. And I could see there's cool ads in it, even if there's nothing else. So, um, seven twenty-four. So, is this from nineteen oh four? Maybe that's what it looks like style wise. Otterly. <laughs> um, yeah, we got a lot of cool ads. There's a college baseball, Columbia versus Brown, last game of the season. We got an ad for Henley's Peerless Ale. Nice. So this is definitely Rhode Island centric. Um, Woodbury's facial soap, summer soap. Nice, nice ads. I guess this is a an opera program. Maybe I don't know. It like seems like just ads. So it's the double bill HMS Pinafore, and Cavalleria Rusticana. And the cast of Pinafore. Is that what this is? This is very oblique. I'll have to read it. Is this Santa Fe Railroad? Yeah, cool. Um. Providence O'Keefe. Yeah, I guess this is the program. Peps and Gun. That's good. Keith's Theater, Imperial Theater. Um, Opera House. <laughs> this is like so overrun with ads, I can't tell what it is, but I guess it's an opera advertising thing. Week of June 22, Carmen and the Chimes of Normandy. I know. Oh. What's this? You ought to read Lady Rose's Daughter, The Circle on Satan's Mount. Broadway Circulating Library. Uh, they really did not put a year in here. 
unless I'm missing it. I mean, the only summer season opera house. The only thing I'm seeing is this um, cigar ad, and I don't even know if that's the year, but okay. So this one seems to be the same. This is different. Let's see. Oat nuts for breakfast. These are really good ads. Um, so it remains to be seen whether I'll cut this up or sell it as is. So it's really pretty cool as is as well. Again, like real lack of year on anything. Uh, different operas though. So what's this one? This is the, it's also the summer season. It must be a different year. We'll look at that Oat Nuts ad. Um, okay. Oh, 1901. There we go. And then what's this? This is like a broadside, but it's really deteriorated. But that might be okay. We'll still try to sell that. Um, here's a program. So more nice ads. Cosmetic Coke. Oh, <laughs> domestic Coke. Oh, that's not Coke. Coke. That's coal Coke. With a handwritten amendation there. Cool. And then this one. It's another one of these programs, but it's a different one. Another summer season. Um, Signora A. Montegrifo. Especially engaged for this production. Okay, so it's another of the same kind of thing. And is this, what is this? Seems like pages of a program, something. Nice ads again. Providence Opera House. I guess this is the whole program. It's just very deteriorated. And it's like mostly ads, but they're really nice. Party slippers. Alright, this one I might cut up because it's already kind of going, but we'll see. So this whole Providence Opera House thing, pile, and the book, and these, which this label does not seem to apply to what's in here, but these are all Vietnam era snapshots, and I think they are um, taken in Vietnam. So... I'm gonna have to research these too, but they look really interesting and there's a lot of them. Um, people, it's Mr. General Harmon. Like there's people's names on things, which is cool. Um, there's like a band. Like this is, do you think this is Vietnam? Probably, it seems. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going to look through these at length and see what's what, but they seem extremely interesting. Um, you can kind of get a feel for them. But that, uh, that was my other purchase from this boot. So I'm going to go through these carefully see what there is to see. Um, I mean, I just flipped, like, I just saw a couple of them and I was like, yep, picking those up. So these and this Opera House thing and this DLV Griffiths thing and this book were $10. So we are up to $22.95, $32.95. And then I bought something <laughs> for my remaining budget of uh, $7.95. Well, it was, my remaining budget was $7. <laughs> so I kind of overspent a little, but it's downstairs because it's for us. And I put it up on the wall and I'm waiting to see how long it will take before my husband notices but I'll, I'll insert a picture of that here. And I bought it because it made me laugh so hard and I couldn't stop. So 
so I just, you know, I had to. And I'd already had a plate hanger, so how can you go wrong? So that was my $40 at the flea market, and I bought two things for myself, which is really naughty and not what I usually do, but hey, it was, it was just a Sunday adventure. So I'll let you know how it goes on this stuff eventually. And thank you, and take care, and please subscribe and like, and that's it. Bye.